Okay, so I'm sitting in Henderson's Cafe in Edinburgh and I'm talking to Gary Duncan about his new book of flash fiction called You're Not Supposed to Cry. First of all, Gary, could you tell me um, about the book, about its genesis, about how it came together as a book? Certainly, yeah. Um, it's it's a collection of flash fiction or short stories. Um, there are about 50, 60 stories in the collection. Uh, some of them have go back two, three years. Uh, some were written in the last few months before publication. So there's, there's a sort of a two-year, three-year span um, while, I, while I put them all together. Some have been published already in magazines. Most of them are new, original for the collection. Um, I suppose they're... They, they range from anything from about 100 words to 1,000 words for the longest one, I think. Um, they cover a number of areas. I suppose a lot of people have said they cover the mundane, the everyday, um, everyday people, everyday situations, looking for the small details in people's lives. OK. I mean, I'm actually looking at the cover, um, which was designed by Mark Beacon, who's our resident cover designer, and it, it, it's got that kind of retro 50s look of a... Um, a, a primary school spelling chart with a number of tiny little details like a clipboard, a wheelie bin, a cigarette. And Do, do these reflect uh, the stories? Are these taken directly from stories in the collection? They, they are, yes. There's, there's a number of images on the cover and each one, I think it's, it's, it's quite a, a, it's, it's a very clever design because it, it does suggest that there's quite a lot in the book. It's not just... Um, there, are, there are common themes... Um, a number of a number of stories touch on the same themes, possibly the same characters. Some some are linked deliberately, some not so deliberately. But there's still a, a common connection there between the characters and some of the themes I've been looking at. Um, I think in terms of where the stories came from, people people tend to know you know where did you get the ideas from, things like that. And I think a lot of the, a lot of the stuff I used to read when I first started to to write many years ago were were um, northern. Northern English working class writers, um, Stan Barstow, Alan Sillito, people like that. Um, and that, that kind of stuck with me for a long time. I read those when I was about 17, 18. Um, and you, you read people like that and you think, this is, this is something I can relate to myself. Um, you know, the whole thing about um, people say, write about what you know about. Um, so I've, I've kind of done that without realizing subconsciously, I suppose I've done that. Um, and a lot of the stories are. The, the, most of them are set in, not specifically, but they're set in and around um, Northumberland, northeast of England. Um, and most of the people in the stories are, you could probably say, are working class people who tend to lead fairly mundane lives on the surface, but hopefully the stories are looking beneath the surface. Um, I think a good flash will be a glimpse of what's going on, so you don't necessarily know what the whole backstory is. You haven't got time to do that if you've only got 500 words. But hopefully you'll get a you'll get an idea of a bigger story within these snippets or within these glimpses of stories. And again, I think if, if a good flash story works, you'll have someone read it. Probably it'll take a few minutes to read it, but then they'll be thinking about it, and then they'll be going back and possibly linking some of the stories and thinking, oh, that might be related to that one. And and hopefully they'll have there'll be a nugget in there that they can go away and think about, and hopefully go back and read the story. And that's something I was going to ask you about. Um, I was looking at one of the flash fiction websites. In fact, it might have been the website for one of the literary prizes, or maybe the, the Bridport Prize or something. And it, it said that exactly what you said about a, a good flash fiction has the ability to imply or hint at a larger story. And of course, they quoted that famous Ernest Hemingway six word story for sale, baby shoes, never worn which makes the reader do a lot of the work, which is, is fantastic. But wh how do you define, what, what is flash fiction then? I think technically, if you look at most websites, I mean, I run a flash fiction website myself, Spelk Fiction, and we have a 500-word limit, um, give or take. Um, probably, the, probably the best flash fiction website out there, the, the International Flash Fiction Short Story Magazine at the University of Chester, they have a 360-word limit. Um, so I, I think there is a bit of a grey area. The lines are fairly blurred between what is um, flash fiction or when a flash fiction becomes a short story. I, I'd like to think anything over about a thousand is probably a short story. Anything less than that, seven, seven eight hundred words, is a is, is a flash fiction. Um, having said that, you also have drabbles, which are hundred word stories, which is quite a big thing. There's quite a few very good websites out there now that do that. 
Um, there's a 101 word short story website. There's and and even if you go even further down, there's a um, you have sudden fiction, micro fiction, lots of different terms for things that are even shorter, 50, 60 words. Um, but I, I think myself, I tend not to. If someone asks what the book's about, I tend to say flash fiction or short stories. I think for me, there is a um, there is a blurred line there, and I, I don't think it helps to say that's definitely a flash or that's definitely a short story, because a short story can go up to 5,000 words. I mean, do you think <clears throat> when it gets down to, to that level of brevity, when you're writing a short story of 101 words or 100 words or 50 words or something like that, then it starts to be a comparison with poetry, because you can't spare... A, a single word, whereas even a, a, you know, a short story or a novel, there might be one or two words in excess, but you cannot have anything in excess if you're writing a, a flash fiction with, with that level of brevity. I, th- I think that's true, yes. I think I, th- I think that's the challenge, and that's why, personally, I do like it, because I, I like to try and tell a, a big story in as few words as possible, and, and if you can do that in 300 words, I don't see the need to do that in 500. If you can say it in 300, you say it in 300. Um, I've tried to take a few of the flash stories that I've done and I've tried to extend them and play with them and develop the characters and add scenes and that, but usually I, I'll add two or three hundred words and then reread it a few days later, then chop them all out again. I think if it's 300, it's 300. Um, now, I think you, you mentioned um, the competition before. I think the, the quote you mentioned about um, about keeping them, about a flash being a, a glimpse of something bigger, I think David Gaffney, who um, who has said that before as well. He's he's probably the best flash fiction writer out there at the moment, and he does. Um, he calls one of his collections was sawn off tales, and you get the idea that it's he. From from what I've read about what he does, he he writes big first. He'll he'll write, he'll overwrite the story, and then he'll cut it and cut it until he gets. I think in sawn off tales are about usually about 150 words, which is a very that's a very short that's at the shorter end of the flash spectrum. Um, but you can see how he does that. You, you read his 150-word stories, and, and he could probably write that as a 1,000-word as a story, and it would still be a great story, but he, he cuts it just down to the bone, just exactly what you need to know, and the rest the rest he will leave. I think in some of, in some of the ones I've done as well, I like to think if um, there's one story about a couple who um, have lost a child, and in the original version, um, I described a little bit about that. I, I did a few scenes, a few paragraphs on that and then went back to it and took it all out again um, because I think for the purpose of the story all you need to know is that they're bereaved parents you don't need to know the whys and the hows of what happened and I think once you start doing that once you start explaining everything you're not really letting the reader do anything for themselves you're, you're, you're explaining everything to them mm. yeah, I'm, I'm reminded of something somebody said of um, at Chekhov's plays and uh, they described Chekhov as looking at life through a keyhole into someone's house and he didn't know what was happening over there to the left or over there to the right but he was telling a story about what he could see um, and I think that's really interesting that the idea you don't have to know everything and sometimes the writer doesn't know everything all they know is a little bit of the story that they have told us that's all you have to know but it's not it's not always important that you you go into detail you tell everything I think so. Yes, if 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 we're just sitting here and we see somebody in the corner, some 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 person in the corner, you can imagine what that person's life is like. You can you can um, you can read between the lines. You can imagine what's going on with that person, but you 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 wouldn't know the whole story unless you knew that person. So I think that's what I quite like as well. You you take a person or you take a scene, and you approach it as an outsider, and you you put your impressions onto that person or onto that scene. And you take away just the bit that you want to get across, like the bereaved per- the bereaved parents. That was the story. Um, the rest is just incidental background that you don't need to know. You have uh, endorsements in the book by other flash fiction writers and editors of flash fiction magazines. Uh, Peter Blair, Ashley Chandler of the International Flash Fiction Association. Santino Prinzi, author of Dots and Other Flashes of Perception. So is there quite a flash fiction movement out there, and how long has it been going on? Um, I think there is, yes. Um, It is a very close-knit community. Um, A lot of the people who are in it 
are also obviously writers of other fictions as well. I think that's one thing um, I'm always quite aware of. I don't want to be known as just a flash fiction writer. I think there's, I think you can write a, a really good flash or you can write a really good short story. Um, most people then suggest, why do you write a proper novel next? That that tends to be the the natural assumption that a you proper can't, novel exactly that you can't write a full length novel. So this is just little a bit of foreplay before you get to the big proper 500 page novel. Um, but within the Flash community, I think there is as um, the, the people you mentioned um, were. I think we're all kind of we all are kind of aware that we're in this small community. It's still a fairly small thing. You mentioned Flash to most people, and they're not quite sure what it what it is. So you know you you tend to just say short short stories, um, to ex by way of explanation. Um, but there are a number of magazines now. Um, I think the oldest magazine is about 10, 15 years old, possibly. And that was um, I think the Vestal Review in the U.S. Um, a lot of this has come from the US, a lot of the magazines I read and a lot of the writers I follow um, are based in the US. Um, there, is a, there is a push in the UK now, there's um, Tanya Hirschman um, um, who's, a, who's had a couple of flash books out, she set up a, a website called Short Stops which is a resource for UK and Irish flash fiction writers um, and she has lists of, of dozens if not hundreds of magazines on that so it's a, it, it is a very small but vibrant community. Yeah, it's interesting that in America, um, the short story is very highly regarded. I mean, it still is in this country, but there's something about the short story. Some some people have described it as a, an American genre that they, they mastered it. Uh, what, what, what do you think about that? I think that's a fair comment as well. I think you only have to look at the, the amount of publishers in the UK who who will even consider to read flash fiction or short stories. Um, it is a very hard market to get into, and I think that's 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 why there is such a vibrant community of of small presses and and online magazines and websites. Um, so I think we're all kind of aware of that. We're all trying we're all trying to promote this, um, and we do we do tend to do that. There's there's a lot of sharing of ideas, a lot of sharing of stories, um, mainly on online through these communities and forums. Now you have your own uh, magazine. Uh, uh, is, uh, is it an online or a print is, magazine yes. called Spelk? Could you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, Spelk Fiction was something I set up in 2013. Um, it it came out of my interest in short stories originally. I, I was writing short stories, um, sell them, well, sell, I say sell them, I was never paid for any of them. I was, I was having them published by, by websites in the UK and the US. Um, um, back in 2013, I did a lot of crime short stories. Um, so websites like Shotgun Honey in the US, Near to the Knuckle in the UK, Flash Fiction Offensive, um, the, the three or four big websites. So I, I'd had a few stories published in those those kind of magazines, um, but at the same time I was also going back to what I mentioned earlier about the um, the, the smaller, more, more mundane stories that I that I used to read. Um, uh, inspired by uh, Alan Silito and Stan Barstow, um, so I wanted to try and find a few more markets like that. And um, most of the most of the the short story magazines, they either did crime or they did other stuff. Um, what what I wanted to do was to go onto a website and read a crime story on a Monday, on a Wednesday, read a more literary thing, perhaps if you want to call it that, something else the next week, different genres. Um, there weren't too many of those around at the time, so as I was getting into this short story community, I thought I would just set up my own my own website to do that, and that that was the premise behind it. Um, we would publish anything around about 500, 500 words, um, regardless of genre or style, location of writer, anything. We would just open the open the gates and see what came in, and a lot of a lot of the stories. Um, that appear in here were inspired by that by that time, and I had a, a six month period where I was writing one or two flash fictions a day, um, and then some of them have ended up in this in this collection. Where do you write? Um, I write at home. I, I work at home. I'm an editor. I, I'm full time. I work full time at home, um, so I have my own office at home. I have two two setups. I have a work computer, a work desk, and I have a, a non work computer and a non work desk. Um, so I, I spend a fair amount of my time scooting back and forward between the two, writing a quick story and back to work. Um, but I, I do stay at home most of the time. I, I do like to go out to coffee shops a lot as well, um, depending on how busy I am. But I, tend to, I like to get out every day if possible to sit in a cafe or sit by the beach and, and write there as well. Fantastic. And last question, why should people read flash fiction? 
Um, I think because it is something fairly new still in this country. I think, um, as we've said before, there are, there are certain countries. Um, Germany, for example, they have a they have more of a tradition of um, uh, shorter work, shorter shorter collections. Um, I think in I think it's in France or Germany you can buy short story collections from vending machines in in train stations and things like that. So I think it's it's. <coughs> For me, it's ideal if I'm if I'm travelling. I can sit down. I can read three or four stories in a in a short journey. Um, I do tend to read very very long novels or very short flash fiction. One or the other. I'm, I'm kind of stuck between the two. Thank you very much, Gary. Thank you very much.